For the Holiday Baking Championship, the bakers created classic sweet holiday towers called croquembouche. So a croquembouche is a classic celebration cake usually seen in France. Croquembouche means crunch in the mouth. Today, we're gonna go big with it and make one for the holidays. I'm gonna make three different kinds of cream puffs. I'm gonna assemble it in a tower. I'm gonna have a lot of fun decorating it. And Sarah's gonna help me. You know, croquembouche is really like the Super Bowl of making pastries. Like, you can make a lot of stuff and get good at a lot of things. But when you attempt a croquembouche, that is a big, big achievement. Okay, so first we make a big batch of pastry cream. I'm gonna heat up this cream. Sarah's gonna get started on the yolks. So I'm gonna put half the sugar in the milk. Sarah gets the other half. Okay, so Sarah's got sugar in there, and now she's added cornstarch. Once you start seeing bubbles around here, look, and you see it moving a little bit. Oh, oh there okay. it goes. Now watch it go. Right now, it's thinking about it, it's just gonna go bloop. Oh, oh, here it comes, here it comes. Get it off. Oh, there. that was a good one. Ah! <laughs> okay, so now what I'm doing is very slowly adding the milk. Now the yolks are nice and hot. Now we're gonna put it back in the pot and we're gonna cook it till it's thick. Okay, so this is a classic pastry cream. You can use this pastry cream to fill an eclair, Gateau Saint Henri, you can fill a donut with it. You can put it in a bowl, eat it like pudding. There's so much stuff you can do with classic pastry cream. But from this point here, you can start branching off into any direction you wanna go. We're gonna make filling for a cream puffs. I'm just turning it a little thicker. Now at no point when you're making a pastry cream can you stop stirring. So just about done. I'm gonna add butter. So when you add butter to pastry cream, what it does, it makes it really, really smooth. Plus it tastes like butter. You really can't go wrong. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna divide this into three different bowls and we're gonna flavor it three different ways. Nothing's burnt. Because I'm awesome. <laughs> you don't agree? No, you, yes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was my whisking that I did so good. I think that's what it was. <laughs> okay, so one of these is gonna be caramel cinnamon, one of them is gonna be chocolate orange, and one of them is gonna be chocolate peppermint. I'm adding melted caramel right now. And I'm adding dark chocolate. Mmm. <laughs> Look, it's already melting. Mm -hmm. So you can see we're working really fast because the pastry cream is hot. That's gonna get all the flavors incorporated into the pastry cream. You can't really work with pastry cream when it's cold. This is gonna make a delicious croquembouche. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you have your pastry creams. Let me show you how to take care of them so you don't ruin them. Take the plastic wrap. Poke it down into the center, just like that. You wanna make sure your pastry cream is nice and cold, so let it chill for about an hour before you pipe it into the cream puffs. You wanna do this with all your custards. So now we'll put these in the fridge. Okay, so our pastry cream is cool. I've put it in pastry bags, so now we can start filling up our cream puffs. The cream puffs are made of pate choux. Pate choux is a dough that you actually cook on the stove before you put it in the mixer and add eggs to it. Then when you put it in the oven, the outside gelatinizes, the inside starts to steam, and it goes poof, and it pops up like a popcorn. And the cool thing is, the inside is totally hollow. So what you can do is take a little stick, poke a little hole, take a pastry bag full of something yummy, And now you have a cream puff. Okay, so we just finished filling all the cream puffs. We got chocolate orange, chocolate peppermint, caramel cinnamon. Now we're gonna make a croquembouche. To build this tower, we're gonna use a mold. Now you can buy really fancy croquembouche molds and they're really expensive. I went to the craft store and I got a styrofoam cone, probably cost about $1.99 and I wrapped foil around it. It's gonna be just fine. You've put so much work into this croquembouche, make it look awesome. 
You want to make sure that your sugar is really warm, right? Because if the sugar is too cold, it's going to be too thick on your cream puff. There's a lot of ways to do this. I like using chopsticks. It's just easy to get in there, easy to grab, and easy to let go, too. You just got to go one at a time. And be really, really careful when you're doing this. Hot sugar is like napalm. It just won't come off. OK, so now all you need to do is have a little bit of patience and build. All right, just a couple more. And done. Now we're going to decorate it. So I'm going to make some spun sugar snowballs. This is going to be really cool. OK, so let me show you how to make sponge sugar. First thing I did was I cut the end of a whisk off. And that's going to make a bunch of times. I'm going to dip the ends of my adulterated whisk here. I'm going to run it over some chopsticks. And the sugar that's trailing off is going to make these super fine threads. I'm going to take those threads and gather them up. And we're going to make little snowballs. OK, so take the whisk, get a bunch of sugar on there, and wait till they're all falling off of the tines just like that. Now you want to make sure that your sugar is still liquid, but it's cool enough that it's got some viscosity to it. If it's too hot, you're not going to get threads like that. Mix up the sugar, and pull it off, and you just start going back and forth. So it's back in the sugar. Pull this off. And then just very, very gently make a snowball. So for a croquembouche this size, I'm probably going to make about 12 or so snowballs. Now let's make some tinsel. All right, so to make tinsel, what I did was I took two sticks, stuck them under my cutting board about a foot apart. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the sugar over top of them. I'm going to make a really long rope. And when you do this at home, you want to make sure you put down a towel that you don't like, some parchment paper, something to protect your floor. Because the sugar goes everywhere. I'm going to take that rope, kind of make it into a tube, and I'm going to start wrapping it around the croquembouche. One more little tinsel. So what we've done is we've taken the croquembouche, we've turned it into a Christmas tree. So this big, tall croquembouche, we wrap tinsel all the way around it, and now it looks like a tree. Now let's add some snowballs. Awesome. Good job. All right, there it is, my croquembouche. It's not a beehive hairdo, it's dessert. For my croquembouche recipe and all my other recipes, go to foodnetwork.com slash Duff's Sweet Spot.